If you don't know me, my name is Trey Waters, and I am a compounding pharmacist with Specialty Pharmacy here in Southern Pines. And what we're going to be doing tonight is I'm going to be doing a lecture um, on, I'm just going to give you like three testimonies, uh, if you'll advance the slide, on age management and bioidentical hormones. And this is the first night that I'm working with my iPad, so bear with me if there's any time delays. But our agenda, I'm going to introduce Specialty Pharmacy. We're going to provide you the three testimonies, and then we're going to turn the program over to Dr. Stocks. Next slide. We, we at Specialty Pharmacy, we're a one-stop shop. Okay, we do traditional prescriptions. We honor all the insurance cards, uh, but we specialize in compounding and wellness. I've been a pharmacist since 2002, and I've definitely done the count, stick, lick, and pour side of pharmacy. You know, you count to 30, you put a label on the bottle, you say, take it with food, thank you very much. But that's not exactly why I got my doctorate. I got my doctorate to use my brain every day. So we got involved in compounding, and we got involved in wellness and functional medicine. Um, via Dr. Stock's first of the year, we're going to start our own HCG weight loss program. Uh, we've actually had our 750th patient do HCG this week. Uh, we have had tremendous success with a medically supervised weight loss program. And as you guys know, weight loss just leads the way to all sorts of other debilitating uh, uh, health care problems. Um, the other things that we do at Specialty Pharmacy, we offer consulting services. So I do bioidentical hormone, and, and my partner, Dr. Shelley LaRich, we do bioidentical hormone consults, ADD, ADHD, thyroid, weight loss, nutrition. Uh, we do exercise and uh, um, smoking cessation consultations. So really, we like to think outside of the box. Um, so moving, moving forward, what is functional medicine? What is integrative medicine? Well, in my opinion, we study and we follow science and physiology. There's a reason that we have four semesters of anatomy and physiology and four semesters of immunology. Okay, there's a reason. And when we can replace what is missing with what is missing, or we can eliminate the things of the body that are causing problems, I say kind of get out of the way and let the body heal itself. And that's what we see happen. Um, so our goal at Specialty Pharmacy is to actually provide you with a unique regimen that's specific to your needs. All right? And that, I think that resonates with a lot of different patients. Go ahead and uh, next slide, please. So this is our first testimony. Um, and I hope you guys enjoy testimonies as much as I do. But this really fired me up. This patient called me this week, a 70-year-old female. Uh, she presented with Sjogren's disease. And one of the ways that we're unique is we actually talk to our patients, okay? So she's got dry eye disease, and she comes to me, and she's like, I've tried every lubricating eye drop there is on the market. None of them work. What are my options? So, you know, I know the patient. I know she's got Sjogren's. For the, so the first thing that, that I said was, we need to sit down, okay? This is not a one-minute exchange. I need to sit down and talk to you. So she comes to our consulting practice. Really, like I said, by chance, she was coming into the pharmacy to get lubricating eye drops and, uh, and a saliva substitute. So we sit down. We know that Sjogren's is an autoimmune disease, okay? So I'm not going to talk to you forever about immune imbalance and Th2 versus Th1, but you can think about the immune system as, as two different factions. One is a shotgun. One is a rifle. The shotgun is Th2, all right? That's going all the time. You know, it catches allergies and whatnot. But sometimes that Th2 system becomes very, very dominant, and that's autoimmune disease. So it's going berserk over everything, all right? So we also know that dry eye disease can be complicated by hormonal imbalance, specifically low testosterone, and that's been in the recent literature, ophthalmology journals. So we did a workup on this patient, uh, including diet, prescription, and other related issues. We worked with the doctor's, eye, the, the patient's eye doctor and regular physician. We got their testosterone levels checked, and we used bioidentical hormone testosterone to replace her levels. Lo and behold, her levels were very, very low. So we compounded in our lab a version of testosterone that was bioidentical to what she needed, to what her body produced. And this is really cool, guys. We used a, a plant sterol called Modicare. All right, and this is an OTC pharmaceutical grade supplement. It balances and restores the immune system. Literally, two weeks later, she calls, 
She's in tears. I then, I, I mean, I literally well up because now she's reading again, which she couldn't do for years, all right, and she can eat regular food again because she couldn't eat because her mouth was so dry, probably about as dry as mine is right now. So <laughs> this is an example of functional integrative medicine. Pharmacist, physician, patient, all right? Patient two. We've all seen these patients, okay? This is a 44-year-old black female. She presents with the following symptoms. Vaginal dryness, lack of libido, fibrocystic breasts, migraine, irritability, mood, mood changes, headaches, restless leg. All of these symptoms occurring the two weeks prior to her cycle. Now, we have a term for this. We talk about PMS, right? PMS is when people act this way the two weeks prior to their cycle. We have a different term for the people that act that way all the time. Okay, it's not PMS. Um, it, it, well, I'm not even going to tell you what it rhymes with. But anyway, during the consultation, she also reported that her thyroid was completely normal. She knew it was normal because her TSH was normal, and her doctor told her that it was normal. However, she has cold hands, cold feet, her hair's falling out, she has cloudy periods, she's apathetic towards life, her nails don't grow, and they crack. She's tired all the time, and the outer third of her eyebrows are not growing. All th hypothyroid-related symptoms, if you ask me. She's on triptans for migraine. She's also on Lexapro. She's on birth control pills and Synthroid. She doesn't take any vitamins. So we work with her with regard to her diet. She usually has a diet drink on the way to work as well as a yogurt in the car on the way to work. Now, yogurt is a breakfast dessert, okay? Act Activia, that's a breakfast dessert. You might as well just pump, pump sugar down your, down your mouth, okay, because it's not healthy. Uh, so she works through lunch usually. Sounds like a, a health care provider, right? We're so busy taking care of everybody else that we forget to take care of ourselves. But she doesn't eat fast food very much, just three to four times a week. And she tries to cook most of the time at home. So anyway, following the consult, we request additional labs. Complete thyroid panel. We know TSH is not the ticket. We've got to get a T4 and a T3 and a reverse T3 and all sorts of other labs that I'm not going to quiz you on. Okay, we need a free and te total testosterone for this patient. We need a vitamin D3 level. How many of you guys have heard about vitamin D3 and all the things that it does for you? Anybody want to tell me what level you should have, what level you should target of vitamin D? Now, I'm not talking about your dose. I'm talking about 55 nanograms per deciliter. That's your goal for vitamin D. Normal is 32. At 55, you're actually building bone and preventing disease. Okay, we wanted a red blood cell magnesium. Okay, this patient has restless leg problems. We want to know her magnesium levels, not serum. I said red blood cell. So we're actually going to check an erythrocyte magnesium level in this patient. Serum's going to be normal. Serum's going to be normal across the board because magnesium sits at the cell level on every cell of the body, 64 trillion, tr trillion cells. Magnesium is there. All right, we want to know what's happening on the red blood cell. And then we did homocysteine and CRP, or we requested this. Homocysteine, hey, she's 44 years old. She's on birth control pills still. She's got all these symptoms. I want to know what's going on with her methylation processes. What is she doing with B vitamins, okay? CRP, I want to know her cardiac risk factors, all right? Who dies more readily from heart disease, women or men? If you said women, you're right, because when a woman gets heart disease, it is very, very, very very dangerous, okay? It's kind of a silent killer. Working in conjunction with the doctor, we decided to do estriol for the vaginal dryness. Okay, estriol is one of the estrogens that women make. Okay, 80% of the estrogen that you guys make is estriol. It's a very, very weak estrogen, but it has a tremendous affinity for the vaginal mucosa. Great for dryness. Fibrocystic breast disease. The very first incident of Western medicine in this world, Dr. Busengalt decided to use iodine for goiters. Okay? That was the first incident of Western medicine. One product for one disease state. Iodine for goiters. What we also know, based on Dr. Jonathan Wright's work, is that iodine will reverse fibrocystic breast disease very, very rapidly. All right? So we did that. And then she has luteal phase problems. The last two weeks of the cycle, as you remember, she had moodiness, irritability, restless legs, migraines. We used progesterone, okay? 
really what she had was a luteal phase progesterone deficit. It was actually created by her birth control pills. Because as you know, birth control is not real progesterone. Okay? So we did these things, and we also asked her. Now remember, progesterone, progestation. So that while she's on progesterone, we're certainly doing backup for contraception. Okay? Then we uh, worked with the doctor to discontinue her Synthroid because Synthroid rarely works or a lot of times does not work because it's an inactive form of thyroid. And we got her on a bioidentical thyroid product. Restless legs, we did magnesium glycinate. Okay, magnesium glycinate is tremendous for restless leg and also for rest. And it also works fantastic for migraines. All right. We did D3 and fish oil. We modified her diet, gave her more protein in the morning less sugar, less refined carbohydrates, more vegetables, and we got the diet drinks out of our life. Okay? 80% of all non-drug-related uh, complaints to the FDA, listen to me when I say this, 80% of all non-drug-related complaints to the FDA are on aspartame. Get that crap out of your life. Okay? It is neurotoxic. Get it out of your life. Month two, when she comes to pick her second month, the patient reports increased quality of life, more energy, and all of the before-mentioned symptoms are improved. Her hair is actually starting to grow back. Her nails are growing again. She's feeling better. Um, it's just a tremendous relief. I mean, I never got this type of thing when I was dispensing products, you know, count stick, lick, and pour. I never got hugs. I never got patients calling me and saying, gee, that Lipitor, I tell you, I just feel like a new person. Thank you so much. <laughs> I mean, it never happened. So, I mean, I, I have a reason to get up in the morning. Next slide, please. We've got to have a little levity, okay? Men, we're pretty easy. <laughs> Women are not as easy, okay? So, next slide. We've talked so far about autoimmune disease. We've talked about menopause or perimenopause. We're also going to talk about andropause. Anybody heard about andropause? Andropause is male menopause, okay? It's actually, you've probably seen commercials for low T, all right. This gentleman, 59-year-old white male, he presents with fatigue, lower back pain, lack of desire to do the things that he used to really like to do, lack of libido, and he's also not sleeping well. He also has diabetes. He's taken metformin, no other vitamins. He was told to follow the ADA, ADA diet. Now, anybody in here know about the ADA diet, American Diabetes Association diet? It increases blood glucose, okay? Just, just telling you, it does. High grains, high carbs is not the diet of choice for a diabetic, okay? So we work with diabetic patients all the time to fix their diet. This guy says, hey, I just want my life back. That's what I want. I want to feel better and I want my life back. And I know that Dr. Stocks gets patients to say this all the time. His testosterone level was 247. He was told this is normal, okay? This guy feels terrible. So he was actually told, hey, this is normal, but if you're depressed, we can put you on an antidepressant. Well, that's, I mean, that's not really replacing what was missing. The guy doesn't have a Lexapro deficiency, okay? So we worked with him, actually, to get him to a different doctor. Um, we got him on testosterone. We used anastrozole, which is an, uh, an aromatase inhibitor. Really, one of the things we worry about with testosterone is its conversion to estrogen, okay? None of the commercially available products deal with this problem. All of them are just straight testosterone, okay? So we wanted to add an aromatase inhibitor to his regimen because what I'm concerned with, and I'm very interested in what the literature beholds, is estrogen-related prostate problems, obviously specifically for men. But we worry about that conversion to estrogen. A, prostate. B, moobs. You know what moobs are? Man boobs, okay? Men do not need to develop boobs, okay? And that's one of the problems that happens when they convert to too much estrogen, all right? We put them on methyl B12. He already had low energy, so we gave him methyl B12. Why? Metformin depletes it. Your body uses a ton of B12 to metabolize metformin. All right, so we worked on his diet. We gave him magnesium glycinate for sleep, and it also improves, uh, improves uh, energy storage. So next, next slide. So the patient reports on his ne very next refill. Four weeks later, he feels tremendously better. Okay, he's thinking more clearly, has more clarity of thought, more energy. Libido's back, and he feels like himself again. So this is, this is three testimonies of what we do. 
People ask me all the time, what the heck is compounding and what the heck is functional medicine? Well, I think it's fairly clear based on what we do in our practices. We work with patients and physicians or their, you know, the provider to get the person better. And we look at things from a wholeness level. What are they eating? What's their stress modality like? What kind of products are they on? Are there drug-derived nutrient depletions? What's missing and what's causing the issue? Now, if you know me at all, you know that for the last two and a half, three years, I've been looking for a physician. I've been looking for a colleague, okay? We're doing something here in this town that you read about happening in California or Arizona or Vermont or Oregon. What we're doing is we're actually trying to treat the whole person as a whole person. And we really need a physician on board with a like-mindedness, okay, with a kindred thought process. I have been fortunate in, in my life and specifically in my career the last few years to be around these physicians doing the, the fellowship that I did at the School of South Florida School of Medicine, Anti-Aging Fellowship. We didn't have a lot of them around here, and this is not a detriment to anyone around here, trust me, but I just didn't have any functional medicine friends locally. Well, I happened upon Dr. Stocks. I, I actually got a patient coming to me for compounds, and I started seeing Dr. Stocks' prescriptions, and I thought, man, that's a, that's a forward thinker. That's a person who really is interested. You know, he was writing for things that were cutting edge. And I'm like, okay, i got to get to know this guy. So I phoned him up one day in desperation. I phoned his nurse, and I said, we have two exam rooms in the back of our pharmacy. What do you think about opening a satellite practice here in Southern Pines? Well, uh, when, when can you come here and talk? This was his response. So I, I light up. Dr. Stocks is actually a pharmacist, he's a PhD, and he's an MD. Okay, and you can read, I don't have to read it to you, but he's, he's a very accomplished person. Uh, I've, we've formed a tremendous friendship. We've worked together with uh, several patients. Uh, he's been in Raleigh for 30 years as a surgeon, and I'll let you tell him, I mean, I'll let you tell these guys your story on how you got into age management and then how this thing has blossomed. So you guys, please help me welcome Dr. Lewis Stocks. Uh, thank you, Trey. I, uh, I am honored to be here, and hopefully everybody will be a more informed consumer when you leave. So it's all about information. We, I don't think anybody is here to sell you anything but we want you to understand that it's okay to think outside the box when it comes to your health and to ask all the right questions when you interact with your physician. Um, I got involved in integrative medicine uh, because of my own health issues. Um, I wound up being trained at Cynogenics in Las Vegas. I made a very circuitous route to get there um, I've been doing this for about 12 years full time and plan to keep doing it until something better comes along. It changed my life and I think it can change anybody's life if they are uh, have the right information. So I developed a uh, 60 year old middle age aches and pains and had spinal stenosis which is a form of, arth form of arthritis and uh, was going to have to give up my practice and prior to having surgery on my neck, uh, developed a detached retina, and that sidetracked the uh, neck surgery, and then I wound up in Las Vegas trying to learn more about how to get well without surgery and without a uh, miracle drug. So it comes down to this. If you've got malaria, you got to take something for the malaria. But if you have 80 or 90 percent of all the aches and pains and concerns with your health, then you don't need another magic bullet. Um, there are two or three things you can do tomorrow morning to change your life. You can get more exercise. You, know, you can walk 15, 20 minutes a day. You can eliminate the sugar in your diet. You can eliminate, eliminate the wheat. And you can eliminate the dairy. And you don't have to do anything else. And you can see a difference within a month. You might be able to see a difference in less than that. But I can assure you that it would be pretty quick uh, that you will see that inflammation is 80% uh, of what you eat. And no matter what you learn about 
the uh, good side and the bad side of hormone replacement, it will not work if you do not eat properly. And we have, we have some other testimonials uh, that we can share with you tonight. Some of them are actually here. Um, these slides will kind of give us a path to follow. There is no sharp distinction between our endocrine system and our nervous system. The hormone system starts in your brain, it starts in the midbrain, in the hypothalamus, and it is uh, very intimately connected to our nervous system. These chemicals uh, affect each other. They're all interrelated. You cannot have thyroid disease treated without understanding what all the other hormones are doing at the same time. Next slide. How many people do not have at some time concerns about their fatigue? Well, there are lots of reasons we are fatigued. Uh, starting over on the left, yes, you could have heavy, heavy metal poisoning, and that usually is uh, something that good detective work can pick up, but it does not account for most of our fatigue. One of the big causes is something called polypharmacy, taking too many prescription drugs. If you take more than two prescription drugs, there are lots of interactions and the biggest side effect is fatigue. The common, most common fatigue producing drugs are uh, beta blockers and pain pills. In the middle, at the bottom, uh, is another big cause of fatigue, and that is a cardiac cause. Certainly having uh, hidden coronary artery disease is a big cause of fatigue. One of the uh, earliest signs of underlying cardiac disease in men is erectile dysfunction. And so some of these men are, uh, have underlying cardiac disease that has not been identified. I've had uh, one patient recently who, whose concern was fatigue, uh, it was all corrected hormonally. He still had fatigue, so we started digging a little deeper. And sure enough, uh, with proper imaging, it turns out he had an, a lymphoma that had not been uh, diagnosed uh, earlier. And that was a uh, unusual but a definite cause of fatigue. A big cause. 80% of uh, our population probably has some element of sleep disorder. And it can be quite variable, but it is a big cause of fatigue in adults. Our facial features have changed over the last several generations so that we are very likely uh, to develop sleep apnea because the, me the mechanics of breathing have changed as we have evolved. Uh, adding a little weight gain after mid, uh, midlife seems to bring on the sleep apnea even more. I saw a 19-year-old uh, college student this year whose main concern was fatigue, morning fatigue. And as it turns out, he had sleep apnea. Teenagers do get sleep apnea and also younger children as well. Another big cause of fatigue is inflammatory uh, bowel disease and also inflammatory joint disease. The inflammatory component really is a huge uh, component of every disease that, that you deal with. So those conditions have to be identified and addressed. And then we come to the top in the middle. 80 or 90 percent of all fatigue can be traced back to some form of hormonal dysfunction that occurs as we get older. It can be a very low testosterone, and testosterone is no longer considered just a sex hormone. It is a very crucial hormone for many other hormones that uh, come from testosterone. Obviously, a low thyroid can be a cause of fatigue, and even a high parathyroid 
can cause fatigue. Next slide. As a reminder, hormones are messengers that tell one part of your body how to commu communicate with another part. It is integrally related, obviously, to uh, reproduction, growth and development, uh, energy production and storage, and this is where the energy piece comes in, and hormones maintain our internal environment. There are hormones that you don't think about. Vitamin D is not a vitamin. Vitamin D is a hormone. A hormone is a chemical that's produced in one part of your body but works all over your body. And vitamin D is a good example. It is only produced in your skin. And without adequate vitamin D production in your skin from the sun, then you have to get vitamin D in other forms. We live inside, we work inside, we play inside, and it's very common to have a vitamin D deficiency uh, just from that, uh, our, our lifestyle. Next slide. We are all uh, very familiar with some of the symptoms of aging. Uh, the big one is a noticeable and measurable decrease in energy, decreased strength and loss of muscle mass, loss of bone mass. There is an increase in uh, body fat. There is uh, a longer recovery time between your uh, workouts and any kind of exercise. There is a diminished libido and decreased sexual function, and our thought processes slow down. These things are uh, measurable, and during the 12 years I've worked with Cynogenics, and they have 20,000 patients that they have now followed for 15 years. In a 20,000 uh, patient population, 100% of these patients who follow a low glycemic diet get 15 minutes of exercise four times a week and do uh, adequate hormone replacement. These patients all have an improved quality of life. They have been, in 15 years, no increased uh, cases of breast cancer or prostate cancer, no heart attacks, no strokes, and no new cases of dementia. And this data will be published this year. The hormone depletion starts uh, probably in your 30s, but there's a huge decline between ages 40 and 50. And then it plateaus and continues a slow decline. I had a phone call today from a 49-year-old uh, patient who was inquiring about our program, and he was asking about uh, his testosterone level, and we talked about optimum, optimum levels versus normal. He was told that his testosterone level was normal. It was 199, and the range from the lab that the physician referred to indicated that normal was between 195 and 1100. <laughs> so, he said, why are you telling me that my, one of my problems might be my testosterone? And all I can say is that, you know, there is a difference between optimum and normal. What we try to do is restore your level to about 80% of what yours was when it was, when you were in your 20s. We do, do not go over that, and we try to stay somewhere in that range, and we have found through thousands of patients and hundreds of practitioners through Cynogenics that this works uh, best. Next slide. This is the data from Cynogenics, and it is uh, a valid study. It is reproducible, and as I said, it will be uh, published this year. Since this slide was made, there has uh, come out uh, data from the Duke Eye Center, and they are now saying that age-related eye diseases such as macular degeneration, glaucoma, and cataracts are hormone-related, not age-related. These age-related eye diseases could be 
diminished or avoided by uh, proper hormone replacement when it occurs. So in this uh, 14 to 15 year follow-up, the low glycemic diet has been followed by these patients. They get phone calls every month to make sure that they are staying pretty close to the low glycemic diet. Uh, it's, it's just amazing what a low glycemic diet does. Fundamentally, it stabilizes your insulin level. And that seems to prevent the surges in blood sugar that occur if you eat a typical uh, American diet. All these patients have used hormone uh, optimization and they were all encouraged and uh, reported that they got at least 15 minutes of exercise, vigorous exercise that included resistance training a, for a minimum of four times per week. Next slide. We have several patients who uh, want to be in as much control of their low glycemic life as they can, and so we encourage them to get an inexpensive glucometer and check their fasting blood sugar. It needs to be 85 or less. So if you check your fasting blood sugar several days a week and it is not 85, you need to look at what you did the day before in terms of your diet. Um, and if it is running 105, 110, if it's not in near 85, you are not eating a low glycemic diet. You can do better. Next slide. Our um, patients are encouraged to work with a nutritionist if they need a little help. We have several patients who uh, are nutritionists. We encourage every patient to do something very specific with regard to exercise. And we encourage every single patient to make sure they work with their uh, own physician to ask these questions uh, regarding their health. Why am, I, why am I on this medication? What are my options? What causes every symptom? And what can I do to correct it naturally? Uh, we do encourage patients to take supplements. We want them to be individualized. Not everybody needs the same supplements. And we uh, encourage them to uh, work with their pharmacist to make sure they're taking the, uh, the right supplements that they need for their condition. Um, I'm going to leave plenty of time for questions, but before I uh, uh, leave this point of exercise, I would like to ask uh, one of our patients, John Stoof. John, would you come up? And after John, uh, we will be open for questions. Let's see if I can jump up. There we go. How are you guys doing? Um, I've worked with doctors. I, I'm a fitness practitioner in Raleigh, North Carolina. I've got about 55 clients I see weekly. Um, and as you can see, strong over 50. My primary customer base and client base are baby boomers. I started working with Dr. Stocks about uh, 14 months, 15 months ago. And the way I came to Dr. Stocks was the fact that I'm a guy that lives the perfect life, right? I have a, I don't drive very, you know, my gym's right, my, my studio's right near my house. So I get up in the morning, I can walk to my studio, I train my clients, it's all fun all day. But I notice that uh, I eat a low glycemic diet. Uh, I follow, I work out and do strength training three times a week, you know, four times a week. I bike 50, 60, 70 miles three times a week. So, I mean, you know, I got a great life, but I noticed about at 49, uh, 50, my energy level had depleted, and I couldn't figure out why. So through my research studies, I actually looked at the organization that Dr. Uh, Stocks was looking at and, and worked for, worked with, and uh, they just were too cost, you know, too costly for me. So I found age management, and Dr. Stocks here in Raleigh, <coughs> And went in and saw him, got my lab work, and lo and behold, I had a testosterone level of a 75-year-old man. Now, it was uh, 210. 
So my, and my PSA was five. Uh, my vitamin D level was 31. So since that time, after I left his office 20, with it, and got my first supplement, within 24 hours, the next day I started to feel like I used to. And I can tell you that was uh, almost a year and a half ago. I've got uh, five of my clients now, personal clients. I've got a lady that's 71. Absolutely transformation in their lives. Back to where they were before with their energy level. So, you know, exercise. If you don't exercise, you have to exercise and do strength training. You have to follow low glycemic diet. And, even, you know, my, my whole deal is, like I tell my clients, listen, if I gave you a million-dollar racehorse, right, and they say, oh, yeah, I say, what would you do with it? Well, would you get it the best barn? Well, yeah. All right, would you feed it lousy food, let it drink beer and smoke cigarettes? Well, no. Well, would you, would you exercise it? Well, yeah, I'd get it a trainer and exercise it, and i get got to stop with, well, then what's your body worth? Because here's the deal, guys. If you, if you don't take care of the primary, th- the body that we live in, right, you can't work. You can't enjoy life. And many people spend the last 20 years of their life with some chronic disease. And I've got clients that, you, you know, are, if, if just by doing strength training has reduced their arthritis symptoms or gone away. The arthritis exists, but the strength training is, is, is the, one of the proven remedies for so many different things, but arthritis being one of them. Balance we lose while we age. I mean, it's all that fun stuff that you can reverse. So I I commend the work that that these guys are doing. And if you really have a regard for your health, I recommend you check it out. Thanks. Not everybody's going to be a John. But he is a good example of someone who had a healthy uh, lifestyle but still lost that edge. And there is no question uh, the legitimate use of hormone replacement is real. It is something that conventional medicine does not address adequately. Uh, It changed my life. Uh, I tell a lot of my patients, If you want to have a valid driver's license till you're 85 or 95 years of age, you need to do something now. Don't wait. But you cannot get there from here if you don't eat right. You can't get there from here if you don't replace the things that are missing. When you were the healthiest of your entire life, um, I'm sure your potassium was somewhere between four and five. Well, if your potassium drops to two, I think your physician would want to get it back up to four. If your testosterone level was 1,000 or 1,100 when you were 20, we're talking about males, or if it was 100 if you're a female, and now it's 10 if you're a female and 150 if you're a male, your neurons do not work like they did. Your muscles will not work like they are supposed to. Patients who go on a a calorie-restricted diet to lose a lot of weight, if you don't use androgens, if you don't use testosterone while you're losing weight, you lose the same amount of bone and muscle as you lose fat. So these people who are so proud of having lost 40 pounds, 20 pounds of it was muscle and bone. You just don't automatically lose fat unless you are rich in testosterone. And so we talk about testosterone a lot, but we also, when we see patients, we make sure their estrogen levels are monitored. That's both men and women. Men don't do well with a high estrogen level. Neither do women. A lot of women don't need estrogen. Most women need progesterone. Almost all women have bone loss and muscle loss, and they do extremely well with small amounts of testosterone. It will help you keep a valid driver's license for a long time. Uh, Questions?
We, could, we couldn't have done that good a job. I think Trey is really uh, to com be commended for what he's trying to do here. Um, you know, we're doing it in Raleigh. We have thought about doing it elsewhere. Um, our base is in Raleigh. We are interested in branching out. Uh, I am interested in training other people to do what we do. You know, I've lived this life personally for 12 years. I go to Cynogenics for 10 days every year to get upgraded. 20% uh, 20, 20 of Cynogenics patients are physicians. We have 22 physicians in Raleigh who are our patients. And a lot of these physicians would not go back to their private practice and introduce this topic to their patients, but they do it themselves. We have medical oncologists, neurosurgeons, anesthesiologists, ear, nose, and throat surgeons. Every practitioner that you can imagine, uh, we have as a patient. So I think that legitimizes it in its own way. Uh, we are always looking for something better. And when patients ask me, how long should I do this? My answer is, I would suggest you consider it until something better comes along. In the back. You? question was, what do we suggest that we, uh, which path to follow in women who've had a total abdominal hysterectomy? And the reference was to the Women's Health Initiative, which between 2002 and 2004 said that hormone replacement was not as good as it had been uh, advertised. The problem with that study was that they entered patients when they were in their 60s, they um, used synthetic progestins and synthetic estrogen. They did not use bioidentical hormones. And so they were starting off with an older population. And the answer is, in Europe, bioidentical hormone replacement in every study in Europe has been shown to be the exact opposite, that you cannot prevent bone loss and muscle loss without estrogen and testosterone that it does not cause breast cancer, it does not cause endometrial cancer, and it does convey a cardiovascular protection. Uh, this past month of the Journal of Cardiology, this erudite community has now come out and said in, in print that men and women who have maintained their testosterone levels have less cardiovascular disease. Bone loss is more, it's about more than just hormone replacement. Bone loss is about your diet too. Every time you have a sugar, a blood sugar or a glucose surge after a meal, that actually adds to the bone loss. It leaches uh, calcium and magnesium out of your bones. Taking Nexium in Nexium-like products every day leaches minerals out of your bones. The acid in your stomach, or that's supposed to be in your stomach, is there for a reason. If you've got heartburn, probably it's because of a side effect of another medication you're taking. Patients who have high cholesterol and high triglycerides, if you go on a low glycemic diet, it will automatically get better. It is not okay to just take a, a statin or a cholesterol-lowering drug. That is not fixing the cause of your elevated cholesterol. When you're told that it's genetic, that's only a half truth. You can change it, you can, you can actually change this genetic profile that you are so-called born with by eating a low glycemic diet. Does everybody know what a low glycemic diet is? It's basically eating food that it takes a long time to absorb, so that you don't get a surge in your blood in your blood level of your insulin, 
which drives the glucose into a storage depot. One of the, one of the reasons we put on abdominal fat as we age is that it's a stress of sorts, and so we are trying to survive as we did eons ago when there were famines and droughts and pestilence. We have survived for millions of years. And one of the ways we survived now is actually a, a health risk because we have built in mechanisms that conserve energy. So if you overeat or if you eat things that are easily converting the sugar, it is stored as fat in case there's another famine. Sleep apnea raises your cortisol level. You wake up with a high cortisol level. That's stress, and that sends this storage mechanism into uh, action. So you start storing more energy, and it's stored in your liver and primarily in your abdominal uh, region. And literally, patients with sleep apnea are crushing their internal organs with that. Good question. I think since we have not had a, 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 a relationship uh, as far as being on site, I think we are going to probably just pick a time in starting January and we'll be here one day a week and see what the interest is and probably just work with you in the beginning. There's plenty of material uh, here for Trey's Pharmacy and for how to connect with us. We're on the web and uh, we are eager to talk to you anytime. I'll return your phone call. You can get a lot of information from the resources that are on our website. Um, but if it takes a phone call and just a one-on-one, -on -one, I'll be glad to call you and give you as much information as necessary. Um, yes, another question? Wheat, it should be taken off the market. Wheat is converted into sugar in about 10 minutes after you eat it. Wheat is sugar. Wheat is full of gluten. It causes inflammatory conditions. There are probably 100 diseases that are related to gluten. Everything from Hashimoto's thyroiditis to rheumatoid arthritis to um, even um, seizures. I've got a, you know, several examples of patients who were put on a low, uh, low gluten diet, and it corrected their seizures. So wheat is uh, sold as a great resource for food, but it's because we produce so much of it, we've got to get rid of it. That's a simplistic response, but it's true. Yes. Wheat is still wheat. It's still converted in sugar as soon as you eat it. That's been proven. You, you, can give, you can eat a half of a slice of bread and check your fasting blood sugar. Or, no, not fasting. Eat a half a slice of bread, wheat or non-wheat. It could be wheat, rye, barley, or oats. And check your blood sugar 30 minutes later. It is amazing what it will do your blood sugar will probably spike to over 110 or 120 after eating one half a slice of bread. And that happens every time you eat a sandwich. And every time your blood sugar spikes, you have done yourself a disservice. Every patient that has any kind of inflammatory condition, I tell them they should try a gluten-free diet. There is no blood test that is perfect to make sure that you have or do not have a gluten sensitivity. The only way you know for certain is to be gluten-free for several months. Not several days, not several weeks, but several months.